Welcome back. Let's finish the last section of chapter five. It's the average value of a function. What is the average value of a function? So let's look at this picture. Given a function f, let's say f of x is given from a to b, interval a to b. If we find the area under the function, to find this area, you can say the area is basically the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is what we have learned. But let's say f has values at every point. And what you're doing is basically you're calculating the area created by these rectangles and you're adding up all those rectangles. Right? So what you get is basically an approximation. First, then if you make those rectangles smaller and smaller, what you get is an exact value of the area by the integration. What we can do is we can say there are y values along this curve, different y values. Can we figure out a y value somewhere on this curve, maybe at this point, where if you draw, they call this this point. So if you draw a horizontal line through that point and create one big rectangle. The area of this rectangle, if you calculate it, is it possible to match the total area that we already have? This is the question that we want to answer. And the answer to that question is simply yes. Because what you can do is, and say first, let's pick the largest y value. That would be an overestimate, because it's the biggest rectangle. And you can pick the smaller, smallest y value, let's say somewhere here, that would be an underestimate. So therefore it is possible to, f since the area is a continuous function, so therefore it's possible to figure out the location where the y value basically gives you a height of the rectangle, multiplied by the length here, d minus a, let's say call this f of c, where c is somewhere between a and b. The height of that uh, f of that c is basically the height of the rectangle. Multiplied by the side, the other side of the length, rectangle will give you the area. So what you have is b minus a is this length, and f of c is the other length. By doing this multiplication of f of c times b minus a, What do you get is basically the area of the rectangle. You get this area. And since we expect these two to match, therefore the integral must equal to f of c times b minus a. This is basically the mean value theorem for the integral. So what is the mean value theorem for the integral? It says you can find such a location, such a value c, where it gives you an average of all those values for the function the average of all the y values because if you pick the average multiplied by the length which is b minus a then you calculate the area so here if the function f is given and continue it's continuous on over interval a to b it is important that the function is continuous then there exists a constant c so there's a constant c where f of c is basically that height that you're looking for. So f of c is the integral, which is the area, this is the area divided by, multiplied by one over b minus a. Where is that one over b minus a comes from? If you set these two equal to each other, if you calculate the integral that gives you the area, you multiply f of c by b minus a, what you get is the area through the rectangle. So if you set them equal to each other, from a to b of f of x dx equal to b minus a times f of c. So how do you find f of c by itself? You divide both sides by b minus a. This will go into the denominator. Divide by b minus a. This will disappear. So f of c could be figured out by finding the integral divided by b minus a, or you could write this one divided by b minus a, multiplied by the integral. 
that f of c is called the average value of f. So if they ask you for f average, it basically means find the area divided by the length. That gives you an average. And that's what you do is you find the area and you approximate with the rectangle. Okay, so here, this is the only topic for this section. So what we need to do is mostly find the f average or that constant c. So let's look at this example. Given the function f of x is 1 plus x squared over the interval from negative 1 to find c. They don't want to find f of c, they want you to find c. So let me draw the picture so first so to understand this better. The function is given 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared kind of looks like the parabola shifts it up one unit. From negative 1 to 2. The 2 is here. There's this. There we go. If you find this area, it is the same as the area of such some rectangle, wherever that rectangle is. Let's say the rectangle happens to be somewhere here. Where these two sections basically match up. Therefore, the area of the rectangle and the approximation and the area under the curve are the same. This value is what we're looking for. Where is that constant C between negative 1 and 2? So basically, we're looking for that constant C between negative 1 and 2, where the Y value of it is the height of the function. How do we find it? Nothing difficult. What we know is f of c, by the intermediate value theorem, is divided by is 1 over b minus a, multiplied by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So f of c must be 1 divided by b and a are given, 2 and negative 1, so 2 minus minus 1. Integral from negative 1 to 2, the function 1 plus x squared dx. And let's calculate that. It would be one third integral from negative one to two, one plus x squared antiderivative dx, which would be one third times. So this this is one plus x squared. Sorry, this is okay. Antiderivative is x plus x cubed over three. Evaluated from negative 1 to 2. If you replace 2 in there, you get 1 third 2 plus 2 cubed over 3 minus, if you replace negative 1, you get negative 1 minus 1 cubed over 3. You should use parentheses for negative 1 cubed, but it's the same in this case. So what do you get is f of c equals, if you calculate this number, this would be one third times three, three plus two, eight, eight, and nine. That is six, nine, uh, divided by three, this is three. So we found f of c to be three. So we found the f average. It basically tells you that this height is supposed to be 3. This is what you found. f of c is the same as the f of average. I mean, this is average. So they don't want f of c. They want to find out what is the c, the corresponding constant c to respect to uh, this average y value. So what is f of c? You replace c into the function. f of c would be 1 plus c squared. But what do you expect that to be? You expect it to be 3. So now solve this equation. 1 plus c squared equals 3. Subtract, three. Uh, subtract 1 from both sides. You get c squared equals 3 minus 1 is 2. So what is c? c equals square root of 2. 
could say plus or minus, but the negative one is not in this interval. So I only consider the positive. So there, therefore here is the constant C with the height, uh, with the height of three. It gives us that Y value. Okay. I hope it is clear how did we find the constant C. Okay. Just double check my work because sometimes I make mistakes error in the calculation. But it seems to be correct. Here's another example. So we did this example already. So here's another example. Find the F average. This time they ask you for the F of C. If f of t is given at t divided by square root of 3 plus t squared over the interval from 1 to 3. So it's not easy to graph this function, and you don't need to graph the function. What you need to find is find the f average is basically to calculate 1 divided by b minus a multiplied by the integral from a to b of f of x dx. This is what we need to calculate. So f average b. 1 divided by b is given 3, a is given 1, integral from 1 to 3 of the t, f of t, sorry, not f of a, f of t, this is the function is given t, t over 3 plus t squared dt. By the way, this c that I found last time, It doesn't need to be unique. You can have like three C's, uh, different C values that satisfy this property. That they have the same Y value. Maybe there would be another one on this side that has the same Y value. So you will get two of them. In this case, this example, it turned out to be only one. Okay, so here, let's calculate this integral. 1 half integral from 1 to 3 t divided by square root of 3 plus t squared dt how do you find this integral you need to use substitution so i pick substitution to be u equals 3 plus t squared what is inside the square root so take a derivative from both sides du divided by dt equals 2t du equals 2t times dt multiply both sides by dt therefore du divided by 2t equals dt you always need to figure out what is dt so in this case dt equals du divided by 2t and u is 3 plus t squared since there are boundaries i'm going to find those boundaries as well update the boundaries if u is given Sorry, if t is given 1, what is u? So here, you can write it below. If t is given 1, therefore u would be, place 1 into this equation for t. 3 plus 1 squared, which is u, would be 4. t is given 3, what would be u? u would be 3 plus 3 squared, which is 12. So the integral would be 1 half the integral from 4 to 12 of t divided by square root of u and dt is du divided by 2t you notice that the t's here will cancel out if there is still variable t left somehow you should cancel that out otherwise your substitution is not correct 1 over 12, 4 to 12, 1 over root u times 1 half d. I'm going to move this 1 half outside as well. Do 1 divided by 24, the integral of 4 to 12. Instead of 1 divided by square root of u, I'm going to write this u to the power negative 1 half d. So now I can take the entire derivative. 1 over 24, antiderivative is add 1 to the exponent, 
divided by the same exponent, evaluate it from 4 to 12. And you can multiply 1 half, you get 1 over 12. You can simplify this. 24 times 1 half will simplify to 12. And you have u to the power 1 half, which is square root of u. Evaluated from 4 to 12. And by simplifying this, what we get is 1 over 12. Multiply by, replace 12 in the square root of 12. Replace 4 square root of 4. 1 over 12, 2 root 3 minus 2. You can simplify it a bit more and say this is 1 over 6 root 3 minus 1. So we found the f average. This is the f average. It's kind of, uh, again, the numbers are not always that clean. So you notice that there is a square root of 3. So don't expect always to have. Uh, integers at the end or fractions need fractions here one more find the average value of this function f of x is given here how do we find the average value over the interval let's say from 0 to 8 the interval is given from 0 to 8 0 to 8 they should always uh, specify where is that interval okay so again f average is supposed to be 1 divided by 8 minus 0 integral from 0 to 8 of f of x dx this is how you find the f average so f average is 1 over 8 the integral from 0 to 8 f of x dx so now the question is how do you find this integral from 0 to 8 f of x dx and you notice that when we started the integral idea was due to area. So I fig I need to figure out what is this area plus these areas that will give me the integral. The integral basically calculates the area. Add up all these areas. So whatever the result is, that will give me that means I found the integral. So let's find each area. This first one, this would go through one. So this area here, this is one half, length times width divided by two. It's a triangle. Same here is height is one, multiply by this length, which is two, divided by two. So this area here would be one. And this area, you should break it up and say, okay, this part is length one times height two. This is area one. And break this into a square this area would be four here if you don't know how to calculate the area of a, a trapezoid what you can do is always you can break it into rectangle and a triangle so here i can break break this into a rectangle this rectangle has height 1 and length 2 so this area would be 2 triangle would have length 2 and height 1 so this area would be 1 okay so we found the areas so what would be the integral the integral from 0 to 8 of f of x dx would be let me mention that since this part is below the x-axis the air, corresponding area for that, the integral value should be negative, negative one half. The area is positive, but the corresponding integral must be negative. Plus one, plus one, plus four, plus two, plus one. Whatever this number is, is four, six, eight, nine, minus one half, 17 over two. So we found the integral. So this F average is one over eight times 17 over two. Which turns out to be 17 over 60. So the corresponding height is somewhere here. That height is 17 over 60. Which means if you consider this height and calculate this area, 
of this rectangle is the same as the ever area we have calculated so far. These two are the same. Okay, so this is another way that you can find the F average if not given the function, but given the graph of the function. Okay, this is basically it for this section. We're done with chapter five. Next time we will start chapter six.